Um, I love our opening picture because I think that kind of really represents who we are at Allen Creek, our heart. Um, I don't know that if I would, I don't know if you would have known that when we were putting that together, the heart, um, but uh, we, uh, we just really um, kind of pulled together and we thought that was a great message for us. So um, that's what that's there for. Um, we love that picture of Allen Creek. So tonight I want to really kind of talk a little bit about uh, kind of um, kind of who we are at Allen Creek, uh, what we continue to be, and what uh, we're going to uh, do in the future, what, what journey uh, we're on uh, for continuous improvement. Uh, first of all, we continue to strengthen our PLC teams um, to ensure learning for all. Uh, we uh, continue to embrace our qualities in Allen Creek, our acceptance, cooperation, empathy, and support. Um, we see these as the foundation of the culture of, of character at Allen Creek, and we continue to um, believe that. That's, again, who we are, not just something we do. And also, we're committed to being uh, lifelong learners in becoming culturally proficient and being responsive in our teaching and learning uh, for diverse students. So uh, really uh, kind of excited. This year has started out very positive. It's been a really great year. Uh, we had the opportunity to uh, begin some great work, uh, which is a long journey uh, on Superintendent's Conference Day uh, in culturally and linguistically responsive teaching and learning. And this is kind of the inside out work that we've heard so much about um, that we engaged in that day. Uh, one of the, um, well, a few of the things that we kind of learned that day uh, were um, really critical and important in this journey. And that is that it's a mindset. Uh, it's the way we look at the world. Um, it's again, something we are, not just something that we do. And it's really about self-reflection but everyone really understanding their own identity and being comfortable with that identity um, so we can then show up differently in our classrooms with our students um, in a different way, in different relationships. And we talked a lot about the why, and the why is because uh, today our kids are different than they were 10 years ago, and we have to think about who they are in 10 years from now. So it was a really, a really powerful day. Uh, because uh, we, uh, we, we, we spent the day really kind of talking um, in our PLC teams, in our, if you want to call it community circles, uh, we talked about culture and awareness of culture. And we kind of um, took a look at uh, culture and the three levels of culture in all of our uh, discussions that day, and we had great discussions. Uh, and we, we kind of asked the questions, you know, what does this illustration, this is an illustration of a culture tree uh, with, with the three layers, the roots, of course, being um, the deep um, part of culture. Uh, we talked about how would, how would we define culture, and we talked about what resonates with us when, when, we, when we look at this. Uh, got a lot of great feedback from teachers that day um, who had really, you know, uh, Great conversations, um, some conversations that may be uncomfortable, but uh, teachers were risk takers and they felt safe and they uh, really, really had some um, great um, discussions and learning. Uh, so some of the, some of the um, feedback we got was, um, I got to know my colleagues on a deeper level past a single story. And that's interesting to hear that from Allen Creek because they know each other so well. So that's really, um, that's really telling that they, you know, even, even those teachers who know each other so well in, in our small school were able to really have deeper conversations and get to know each other on a deeper level. It's important to consider the underlying cultural implications that our students bring to the classroom and how we can celebrate them. Um, and I thought that was so important to hear that word and to talk about celebration. Uh, culture is not just about, uh, about where we come from, but who we are, but who we are. And there's an example of uh, kind of the levels of culture in that quote. It's about looking inward to understand my own self-identity. 
It's, uh, I'm going to be more mindful of the deep cultural layer of the culture tree. And it is just as important to know and accept who you are as it is to know and accept others around you. Those are the conversations we had that day, and uh, I couldn't have been really more proud um, that we did have those conversations. And it just made us realize that uh, we need to be part of the equation. And we are on this journey with our kids and with each other, and we're committed to it. So it was a very, um, a very powerful day and very, um, lots, of, lots, of, lots of good feeling afterwards. People, teachers felt so good and so, um, so excited and motivated to get back in their classrooms and feel empowered and, and honored, uh, uh, honored their own identity and who they are. So um, <clears throat> what we also are doing this year uh, in partnership with our library, um, with the diversity audit that has been so uh, positive and so great, the work that they've done, um, our libraries are full of uh, diverse literature um, and kids go in there and they, uh, they see stories and text with uh, where they see themselves, they see others, uh, just, just a great place. So we wanted to uh, partner with our library and build our classroom libraries this year. So we are um, throughout the year with the library and we're choosing, we're choosing books throughout the year uh, that we feel are really um, great books for the classroom, diverse literature, and we are um, buying one for every classroom. Our first book, um, which is called um, Tell or Teach Us Your Name, uh, was a great book that we all committed to uh, reading and um, using it as an activity in, in our classrooms. Again, uh, 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 what, is the book, what is the book teaching us, first of all? And that's really about the power of our name and to show respect to others' names and identities uh, by pronouncing our names correctly. Uh, understanding why it's important to learn about different identities um, and spreading the word about um, and the importance of respecting others names and identities the classrooms um, came together and they did things from everyone every student taught their classmates their name uh, they some of them wrote it out phonetically and it was displayed um, some of them told stories about why they were named uh, and who they were named after um, what their name meant and it just created uh, a community, build a community, and it um, just started discussions that were more about, about culture, about backgrounds, about beliefs, and all those things that kind of are creating the culture in the classroom to be a safe place. Um, and it also um, honored, honors their name and it empowers them. Um, so I interesting, when kids come in can, in, into school, into school, I had a few kids who, um, you know, had these really long, beautiful names, and they were trying to teach them their name. And sometimes they say, "Well, just call me Jason." Um, and um, we kind of uh, pushed back a little. We said, "No, teach me your name." Uh, that was the expectation. Teach me your name, because I wanted, I wanted, we want the students to honor their name too. We don't want them to just just give up or just settle. Um, teach us your name and teach us because it's important. So it's, that's, that, that has been a great, um, that was just a great book to, to uh, share in all the classrooms. So we have that. Our next book, um, along with um, really creating a, a homeschool connection, is All the Colors We Are. And this book is um, basically uh, just a book that uh, is kind of, in a simple way, um, tells us how we get our color, how we get uh, different shades of color, just kind of a scientific, um, the scientific reason. Um, and it's such a, a great book to share in the classroom for kids to um, understand, again, where we come from and that uh, they can ask questions respectfully about, uh, you know, about our differences and who we are. And it's uh, just a way to um, empower us and just make everyone feel like they belong. We have connected this to what we're calling an inclusion and equity flyer. I wish I had a better name than just a flyer, but and if anybody has an idea, I'm happy to, you know, uh, to take it and use it. But it's a flyer that we sent home um, uh, with, with the book um, 
And uh, we tell a few things. First of all, we give an introduction to the book. Uh, we, we tell what does it teach us. It has family discussion ideas. Uh, we have other book suggestions uh, for families, families to read. And it, uh, it kind of, it, it's who we are, but it also gives the families understanding of what we're doing, right? You know, and to, and to bring, it into the, bring it into the home. And it also gives families uh, help in understanding how do they talk to their kids about color? How do they talk to their kids about race? How do they talk to their kids about culture? All those things. So um, we're really excited about this, and we think it's a really good um, homeschool communication um, for all. So I have to th really thank our librarians because they've done an amazing job. And now to partner with them um, in our school, it's, um, it's been a, just a, a very positive um, celebration. So it's, it's, it's great. Also, uh, we continue this year, uh, and I won't read all this, but we continue to have many partnerships for community building. Uh, we partner with the Friendly Home and Ronald McDonald House and Pittsford Rec and Powers Farm Mark and Food Link and Brighton Firehouse. Uh, our newest is this Happy Birthday Cha Cha Cha, which is a great, a great program. One of our parents who runs this program started out in adopt by adopting a city school, I think K through second grade in the city school district, um, a classroom, and she, what she did was is she uh, created bags with needs and wants for kids and then gave them to the teacher and then that child would get a birthday bag on their birthday. Um, so that started out I think with one classroom. I know this year she's up to serving like about a thousand kids. So it's been great. So what we were what, what we're doing is that we are uh, working with her and kids are staying after school and they are um, wrapping gifts. Um, she does a whole um, little lesson on why it's important and the wants and needs and what does this mean. And then every kid uh, wraps. Now, uh, also, we're collecting items um, for, for the bags, but a great, a, it's a great program, a great way to um, teach empathy and kindness and uh, caring. And the kids just are great to, you know, just, you know, wrap. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, doesn't matter what it is, they wrap it. It could be a basketball, it could be, you know, a box of dominoes. They, uh, they wrap it and it's just a great, and they're, they're part of the bag and they're very, very, they're very, very proud. Um, and they really make a difference in the life, lives of others. And so um, just a really good, a really, a really good uh, community building uh, program. And then student leadership, we continue our student with our uh, buddies program, our student council, safety patrol, and focus groups. Uh, I guess what I mean about focus groups is uh, there are times throughout the year where we give certainly kids a uh, voice. Um, there are times when I will pull kids in um, either to talk about um, things that are happening in the building that we need to maybe make a decision about um, to maybe something that they're concerned about that they brought to me that they um, that the uh, the the lunch should be longer or uh, re something about recess there might be a conflict there might be something that and I will pull them in and we will um, we will have a focus groups in kind of a community building um, circle that we we've, we've really talked about and we have done that really for many many years at Allen Creek um, following the responsive classroom model uh, which brings me to the responsive classroom model that we have done um, for many years, um, and there are so many there are so many um, uh, ways to look at this. So when we talk about the, uh, it includes classroom meetings, opening circle, and closing circles, uh, academic circles. We talk about book talks or number talks, and then we have our community and restorative circles, which are either whole class or peer to peer, and. Um, it's a way to build relationships, and uh, it, uh, the other thing is it builds community, it equalizes power, and it accesses, accesses students' voice, student voice. Um, so they, they're in a safe and um, trusting environment to really build relationships and to, uh, you know, have academic success. So again, a really... Um, uh, a, a, a great a get who we are and we continue to uh, to really kind of embrace that and and empower kids so important uh, the other thing about you know through all of this work um, that we've talked about that we do uh, what what always comes up is relationships and the, and I and I believe it 
um, 100%. But the one thing that we have to really remember and remind ourselves is that the reason why we build relationships, build rapport plus trust, um, is so that we could um, have cognitive insight. So we can um, help kids and know what their learning routines are um, so they can, um, for academic success. So there is a purpose for learning partnerships to really get to know our kids. And so they feel they can take risks and they are in a place where um, they can grow and we can empower them to be learners. And we can bring them from being dependent learners to independent learners. So two things, relationships and outrageous love. First, let me talk, I, I did talk a little bit about re relationships, and again, I, it's important to say, um, what we're using those connections for to strengthen and empower students as learners. Also, when we think about equity and excellence, equ equity we know is giving kids what they need. The excellence is that all kids are held to the same standard. So we are there to um, empower kids and hold every student to the same standard, but at the same time, giving them what they need because they are not opposing concepts. They are not opposing concepts. So that's really important um, on this journey for us to remember that and always go back to that as we, as we move forward. And the last thing I will say is um, I, I've had the opportunity this last year and this summer to um, go to a lot of professional development about equity and cultural proficiency, and it's been great. Um, and I always take one thing, or there's always one thing that kind of jumps out at me or resonates. And when I was at uh, a Saney's conference recently, um, we had a speaker who was talking a lot about equity and excellence and um, um, all of these things that, that, we, that, we, that are important, right, that are critical and not just nice to have. And he said, um, always remember to give outrageous love to all your kids outrageous love because you know this this work can be can appear clinical it can appear um, um, uh, uncomfortable but we just have to remember to give outrageous love to all our kids and um, that's the message that I sent try to send every day I try to model it every day to all our kids when they walk through the door you get outrageous love whoever you are you could be who you are so um, that's, that's uh, in a nutshell, Allen Creek, um, and it's November. Um, I hope that this, I can say the same message in June. Um, uh, so, but there, there it is. So thank you for, for your time. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to um, try and answer. Anyone? No? Mike, thank you so much. It was very comprehensive, and we enjoyed your presentation. Thank you for sharing everything okay, that you did. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thanks.